All right, we have a quorum. All right, we're going to go ahead and call to order the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority meeting. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll now go on to roll call. Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Vice Chairperson Tick Sagerbloom. Commissioner Marissa Brown. Present. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. Present. Commissioner Carrie Cox. Commissioner Richard Churchio. Commissioner Valerie Craig. Commissioner Michael Disman. Yeah. Commissioner Lachana Turner. Present. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada open meeting law. All right, thank you so much. We'll mark all the members that are currently not here as absent excuse. Please mark them present as they come into our meeting, whether in person or online. Uh, we're now going into public comment. This is the first time set aside for public comment. This time period is reserved for items that are listed on our agenda. If you do wish to come forward at this time, we ask that you state your name and residence for the record, uh, and you'll be allotted two minutes. Please come forward. Is there anyone either in person or online who would like to come forward during this public comment period? Is this the public comment when you filled out that release? Yes, and this is a comment for items that are listed on the agenda. So if there is an item, please list the agenda not, item that you're speaking on. It's Phyllis Carpenter. I'm not sure if it's on the agenda, but I see some Marble Manor stuff up there. And in, in October, when they came and they had their October, Halloween, whatever festival, um, they had us sign a piece of paper for a raffle ticket as if we was signing, like we approved the CNI. And it wasn't that. They said if you wanted a raffle ticket, you needed to sign this piece of paper. Ms. Carpenter? And that's what we did. All right. Wishing to come forward at this time? Seeing no one else, we'll close public comment. We'll now move on to item number three, approval of the minutes. I entertain a motion for members of the board. Is there a motion for approval of the minutes from February 8th? We have a motion by Commissioner Disman. Is there a second by Commissioner Brown? Is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Meeting minutes are approved. We'll now move on to item number four, approval of the agenda with the inclusion of any emergency items and deletion of any items. Are there any uh, inclusions or deletions of any items on the agenda? Hearing and seeing none, we'll entertain a motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Disman uh, for the approval of the agenda, and there is a second by Commissioner Brown. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Meeting agenda is approved. We'll now move on to section number two. Receive a report from our executive director. Good afternoon, all. Uh, as indicated by the, the boards around the room, we have a lot to report out on today. And I wanted to start off um, by having Ro uh, Rodney Milton, our director of finance, come up and give an overview of the write-off process. And Gene Ortega from Operations. I was wondering why you guys were sitting back there smiling. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're so, so Rodney and Gene, sure. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, I remember, if we recall, last board meeting, we had commissioners had some inquiries about, oh, sorry, Rodney Minton, SNRHA uh, Finance Department. As I was saying, last board meeting, the commissioners had some inquiries about the collection write-off procedures, so we're going to give you guys a presentation on those today. Uh, first, um, so we decided to get a complete understanding of the write-off process. We should uh, include what happens before the tenant is moved out of the unit, and that's why um, we're having Eugene Ortega uh, Operations uh, Public Housing Asset Manager. He will start off the presentation and kind of go over an overview of what happens when the tenant is still in the unit. Good afternoon. So the uh, collection procedure overview is, uh, how does a resident OA balance, examples, 
Examples of, of charges assessed to the residents include unreported income, non-reported or non-repayment of rent, late fees, damage charges, uh, legal notice and legal fees. How does management collect on past due balances? Examples of managerial duties include 30-day uh, payment notices are issued on the first business day following the fifth of the month, allowing residents to enter into a repayment agreement, allowing residents to file for a grievance if they disagree with the balance owed, reminder notices on doors, reminder emails, phone calls to the residents, Eviction uh, prevention, property managers and office staff provide a list of agencies that might be able to assist with eviction prevention. The agencies do intake paperwork and verify the need if they qualify and if there are funds, the agency will assist them. Agencies include CHAPS, Nevada tw uh, 211, Clark County Social Services, Catholic Charities and several churches, etc. Uh, the funds from the outside agencies typically go straight to the SNRHA to pay the rent, not including late or legal fees. SNRHA supporting uh, supportive services team has staff uh, assigned to properties, including senior sites. They assist with eviction prevention efforts. The repayment agreement uh, overview, public housing ACOP chapter 13, if a resident qualifies for a repayment agreement due to the unreported income or financial hardship, the resident must provide a minimum of minimum down payment of 25% to enter into a repayment agreement. The remaining balance is divided into uh, affordable monthly payments until the resident becomes uh, current. Example, Jane owes $480 for rent plus $20 late fee. The total amount owed is $500. She provides a down payment of 125. The remaining balance is 325 divided into five monthly payments of $75. Her new monthly rent would be $555 for five months. Uh, grievance proce procedure overview. Public housing ACOP addendum three for assisted units only. Public housing and RAD. The resident has 10 days to request a hearing for any adverse actions, i.e. rent increases, damages, charges, etc. An informal hearing is conducted with the manager in, the, in an effort to mediate the issue if possible. If the resident is not satisfied with the result of the informal hearing, the resident has 10 days to request a formal hearing. The hearing officer then reviews the adverse action and determines if it is in accordance to the policy and renders the formal hearing decision. Management proceeds accordingly. Non-payment eviction overview. If a resident fails to enter into a repayment agreement or the balance in full within 30 day notice period, the eviction is submitted to the appropriate justice court. The resident can request a hearing with the justice court and exercise the judicial process. Once the eviction is approved, the constable is notified to serve the 24-hour notice and then proceed with the lockout. Excuse me. Um, I just want to pause and see if there are any questions. I know that we all have the handout, mm -hmm. and you know I don't want you to feel compelled like you sure. have to read the whole thing, but if you want to, you can. Uh, but just wanted to uh, you know, just know that we all had it. Okay. If you were gonna read word from word. So there, there's two more pages I can finish. Or... All right, that's cool. And, okay. um, sir, sir, just for the record, I know Mr. Menton introduced you, but can you state your name and yeah. your position? Eugene Ortega, asset manager. Yeah. All right, you okay. go with the two last two pages. That's cool. Okay. Um, once the eviction is approved, the constable is notified to serve the 24-hour notice and then proceed with the lockout. The resident is charged the, lock, uh, the legal fees associated with the uh, uh, lease termination process. The depo deposit accounting overview. Once a resident is evicted or willingly vacates the unit, the manager is required to conduct a move out inspection and charge the resident, uh, charge the security deposit for any damages beyond normal wear and tear in accordance with the approved SNRHA charge schedule. Per NRS 118A, the manager is required to send the past uh, resident a move out balance owed letter and an itemized, and a statement itemizing the charge, 
charges within 30 days of the date of move out. So okay. given that, you know, as this request came up, commissioners, um, every month you do the write-off approval, and we just wanted to show you how we got there, you know, before it gets over to uh, Rod's department. And then Rod's going to hit the highlights of once he gets it, what happens. And yeah, so if a uh, tenant moves out with a balance after all those uh, preventive uh, procedures didn't work for them, uh, then it comes to the finance department in which we give the tenants another chance to make a repayment agreement or payments. If uh, they do not make the repayment agreements within the 60 days, then we uh, present it for the board for a write-off. And then after approved by the board, it goes to the collection agency. I have a question. Um, how soon are the residents notified of the additional resources or um, programs that are available outside, like within Clark County, uh, prior to them actually um, receiving the eviction notice? And is the repayment plan percentage negotiable? Uh, I'd have to ask uh, the operations team if they could reply on that. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the question again? And please state your name for the record. Gene Ortega, asset manager. How soon are the residents notified of the additional resources that are, could be available to them to help them prevent the eviction process? And is the repayment agreement negotiable? If they notify us that they're going to have a hardship, if they know in advance, we give them the information right away. Okay. If not, as soon as we serve, as soon as we serve them the 30-day eviction notice, which will be the sixth day of the month. Okay. I just want to make sure that the residents have enough time to apply for those programs because they can take some time oh, yeah. as far as the processing goes. And as to far if anybody's going through the eviction, through the grievance process where they're trying to get assistance, the eviction is put on hold. Okay. And then as far as the repayment agreement, um, I feel like for someone who has a hardship, mm -hmm. setting a payment for them and they already are in a situation where they can't afford to pay their rent for whatever reason, um, I know $75 isn't a lot, but for someone who doesn't have any money or yeah. income at the time, that can be a lot to try to repay. Right. Is that negotiable at all? Well, the 25% down uh, is not negotiable, but... We do refer them to numerous outside agencies. If one doesn't help, usually another will. And if there's a lot of churches that help. Uh, since I've been at my new AMPS, I haven't had to do a single eviction. I have seniors. Okay. And several have been for non-payment of rent. And we, we get them assistance, and usually they pay the whole amount. Okay. And, and Commissioner, keep in mind that rent is based on income. And so if, if, if a person is, if their income changes, their rent goes down. So it, it, it fluctuates. You know, when we charge rent, it's based on what people say they have as income coming in. And, mm -hmm. and if it changes, they let us know and actually rent goes down. So. Okay. And we can actually go up to 12 months if, okay. if need be. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ortega and Mr. Midden. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Commissioners, next, we wanted to have a, uh, Paula Tucker is going to come up and give a, a brief overview of our Rose Foundation. She's also going to touch on some work we're doing with the Boy Scouts as well as the Apprentice Program. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I am Paula Tucker, the Director of Supportive Services for the Housing Authority. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to sh um, talk to you about our Rose Foundation. So the Rose Foundation, um, is our nonprofit arm of the Housing Authority. Um, and it, the ROSE stands for Resident Opportunity for Self-Sufficiency and Empowerment. Um, so just what is the Rose Foundation? Um, the Rose Foundation exists to provide supportive services to residents of the Housing Authority. Um, this uh, Rose Foundation was incorporated in the year 2000 and became recognized as a 51C3 in 2001. And, uh, through grants and charitable organizations, it provides supportive services to SNAR families that might not be covered by uh, agency funding. So our vision is to become an innovative and effective developer and provider of resident services by promoting and offering diverse programs. This is just a picture of when we um, took a group of residents to the um, Raider Training Day event. Um, 
Our mission is to assist clients of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority to develop and achieve their full potential as they transition towards self-sufficiency. And our purpose is to improve the quality of life, promote, promote client development to pursue their full potential in becoming self-sufficient, and to provide opportunities for seniors to age in place with dignity. Some of the barriers that we see that our families face when uh, uh, prior to becoming job ready um, for our self-sufficiency programs, uh, I'm not gonna call all these off, but some of the main ones are, of course, education and employment. And then recently we've been having um, a lot of issues with health and wellness and domestic violence. And then some of the senior resident barriers, um, you know, we have a full list, but some of the main ones are uh, isolation and lack of socialization. Um, <laughs> lack of home care assistance, and then technological uh, literacy, and just kind of help like with their using their cell phones and computers and things like that. Um, we provide uh, actually intensive case management services, and, and that uh, entails um, doing individual assessments, health and wellness, mentoring, uh, self-advocacy, life skills coaching, housing counseling, connection to legal services, financial literacy, community resources, child care, peer support, and educational opportunities such as um, assisting with GEDs, English as a second language, as well as connecting them to, to uh, certification programs, trade schools, and um, colleges and universities. And so just how does the Rose Foundation work? It's basically we um, uh, seek funding and donations, um, and we also solicit grant funds. Uh, for our programs, and then the more funding that we can receive and donations, um, then that e increases the number of residents that we can serve and we can expand the services provided. So I just wanted to make a quick note. Right now we receive funding from HUD for our, like our FSS program and our Ross programs. Those programs are strictly to pay for uh, coordinator salaries and benefits and a small bit of training. It does not allow for any supportive services for the residents. So a lot of the times we have to, you know, seek donations and, and um, write grants that will assist us with those supportive services. And we are actually working on some major grants now. We've submitted grants to um, United Way of Southern Nevada, um, MGM, as well as um, Bank of America to get more funding. And then I just wanted to give a shout out to Commissioner Bruni, who connected us to Grant Lab. So we are registered with Grant Lab, and I get daily alerts uh, regarding grants that we may be able to uh, apply for. So we appreciate that very much. So we are um, continuing to search grants that are appropriate for our programs and then write those grants. Um, and then some of the benefits from all of this, if the more money that we come in, we can move families towards self-sufficiency, we can increase home ownership, provide affordable housing and assistance to more families, we can increase the skill level of our residents, build better communities, and we can promote more community engagement. I think, uh, so I just wanted a, a quick list of some of the events that we had. Um, you know, we have a ton of events and we're really gearing up for a busy season, we're, we're about to do our affordable housing forum. In May, we have our family tailgate, which is a HUD Strong Family Initiative in uh, June, as well as our Home Buyer Expo. Um, last year, we did a 4th of July picnic. We'll probably do something around that holiday this year also, back to school pop-ups. And then we'll be having our celebration of aging for our seniors in October, as well as our FSS graduation, and then move right into the holidays for the end of the year for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So it's never ending, but the more uh, we residents we can serve, uh, we feel like the better uh, position we're in. So um, I, I, Mr. Jordan also wanted me to uh, mention a couple of other things. Paula, before you go there, could you go back to your second slide? Mm -hmm. I think it's important, yeah, that one there. Tell people how much that check is for and, and what's the significance of Okay, it. so this is a picture from our FSS graduation and these are all of the FSS graduates um, that attended the event. And you'll see that Mr. Jordan and I are holding a large check. Then it's for $386,000 and that's the total amount of escrow funds that we paid out in, the, in that year. Um, so all of these uh, residents, when they um, became employed and they started increasing their rent, they got escrow money put into their account. And over the life of their contract, whatever that amount totaled, we paid out to them. And that totaled for these graduates, $386,000. That Thank was a huge amount. Yeah. 
I thought that was very good. Okay. So he, I, Mr. Jordan just wanted me to also let you know that, um, so we had a um, government career fair last month at the East Las Vegas Community Center and over 170 people attended. We had government uh, employers from all over Clark County. It was a huge success and we're hoping um, that we're, we will be connecting residents um, directly to government jobs that are, as we all know, good paying jobs, good benefits long term. Um, and it moves to self-sufficiency and as they move to self-sufficiency, we can assist more families in the community. So we were real happy about that. And then um, our pre-apprenticeship program, um, we work, started working with Commissioner Desmond. We want to give a shout out to him for um, spearheading this from the beginning. And so we actually started our recruiting and we had um, d um, email blasts that were overwhelming to residents over the last week. And uh, we had tons of responses and we had over 100 people to attend orientations in the last two days. So we're very excited about that. We had to turn some people away because they were not residents. But um, uh, uh, we saw single moms bringing their, their young adult children in and signing up as a family. So we were very excited about that. And we're um, looking forward to starting the first cohort, getting those people um, on the job, getting trained and being paid. And um, hopefully some of them will feed into employment with our agency, if not to other agencies in the community. I have a question. Yes. Um, it's a shame that we have to turn people away for not being residents. Mm -hmm. Do we have any information that we can give to those people who have um, interest in apprenticeship programs like that? We do, and there are there are several. Um, ours is actually a pre-apprenticeship program. So, um, and so by us doing it that way, and we wanted to really try to fine tune it internally and try it actually it was to assist us in um, we had some difficulties in hiring through our own maintenance department so that's kind of how we started the whole conversation but there are a lot of apprenticeship programs in the community and we I could definitely get you a list of those but most of the unions offer apprenticeship programs okay thank you you're welcome any other yes commissioner um, well first of all it's, it's most of, of a comment but I, I want to commend you on the service and the work of I see it in the community. I hear it from others. I just left a, um, a luncheon um, with the North Las Vegas and um, State of City and the workforce development. She was very impressed at the things that we're doing here and I hope that we can continue to build a strong partnership to actually include others that might need the help and assistance. Mm -hmm. So they're at our disposal. So thank you so much, Director. Yeah. Thank you, appreciate that. Any more? Oh, I'm sorry, Boy Scouts. Yes. So yes, we did um, complete an, um, an agreement with the Boy Scouts of America. They had a little um, uh, leadership change, so it took us a few extra weeks, almost a month, to get that intact. In but we have um, all of the paperwork in, um, together, and so we'll be starting a Boy Scout troop at uh, Sherman Gardens. And then we hope to expand that to um, all, you know, all of our other family developments that have an interest um, in the program. So we're very excited about that. And shout out to Commissioner Bruni who helped us with the initial introduction to the um, to the leadership at the Boy Scouts. And so it's just a matter of us following up. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Thank you. I want to I want to mention one thing else, Paula. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you all on the work that you're doing with the pre-apprenticeship program. I'm not involved anymore and uh, and to sit back and and know that that endeavor is ongoing and you're having success, I want to congratulate you and continue the good work. Okay, and just so you know, we actually do have, uh, we want, we're going to approach you to actually have a sit down with them once we get them all together. So um, you, you are still on our list. I hope you will uh, participate with us. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Next we have, uh, uh, Dina Williams is going to come up and just talk about our overall development um, strategy. We have, a, as mentioned with the boards, we have a lot going on, and yes. Dina's going to walk us through that. Half that. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Dina Williams. I am your development and modernization coordinator here at the Housing Authority, and today it is my great pleasure to present to you a brief and short overview of our Choice Neighborhood Initiative grant.
the Choice Neighborhood Initiative, or CNI grant overview. The Choice Neighborhood Initiative planning grant is a $450,000 grant for a two-year period to develop a comprehensive plan that would not only completely transform and remodel a specific public housing site, but also to positively impact and transform the neighborhood surrounding that site. So. The CNI is focused on three points, which are housing, people, and neighborhood. Under housing, the point is the well, the goal is to replace distressed public housing and assisted uh, housing with new high-quality mixed-income housing that is responsive to the needs of residents and the surrounding neighborhood. The goal for the people plan or the people sector is to provide comprehensive supportive services to the residents that improve educational outcomes for youth and supports intergenerational health and financial well-being. The point or goal for the neighborhood sector is to create the conditions necessary to spark public and private reinvestment in the neighborhood. So for this CNI, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority as grantee and the City of Las Vegas as co-grantee partnered together to submit a CNI planning grant for fiscal year 2021. We were one of only eight applicants from around the country who were awarded a grant that year. We chose for our site the Marble, the Marble Manor Public Housing and Development located in the historic West Side as the subject of our housing development grant for our CNI for 2021. Those of you who have been around for some time or in Las Vegas know the history of the historic West Side and know that it has suffered from years of systemic disinvestment and has been left out of targeted redevelopment efforts that other parts of the city have enjoyed. And with the award of the grant for the SNRHA in the city of Las Vegas, we work together with the residents of Marble Manor, neighborhood, uh, neighboring homeowners, local business owners, and other key stakeholders to develop a plan that would bring about much needed and long awaited change to the entire neighborhood, which is vital and important to this part of the city. This is a map of the target area of our CNI. It borders to the north, Owens Avenue. It borders to the east, just shy of the 15 freeway. It borders to the south, Bonanza, and it borders to the west, MLK. So the Marble Manor resident participation was very strong for this CNI. The CNI grant mandates that the residents' wants, needs, and ideas serve as the basis for the transformation plan. As such, the first order of business was to conduct a survey of the Marble Manor residents. A joint SNRHA and City of Las Vegas CNI team went door to door around the Marble Manor, which is, if you don't know, 235 units spread across 35 acres door to door in the summer in Las Vegas. So we were much appreciative of them in those efforts. Absolutely. And the goal was to reach 80% participation, which the Housing Authority and City of Las Vegas team did achieve in record time. That 80% goal was hit in less than a month. The information gathered from the residents' surveys was then reviewed and analyzed, and a report was generated where all the responses were consolidated and broken down into various charts and graphs, some of which are here today in the boards that are around the room. So after the board meeting, I invite you to go ahead and peruse around the room, and you can see some of the survey. These are direct results from the survey of the residents of Marble Manor. These are their thoughts, their wants, their needs. After the resident survey was generated, various meetings were held where resident members and general public audience were able to review the information and comment on its findings. These meetings were extremely helpful in refining and drilling down the most important features the residents wanted for the new redesigned property and the amenities it would offer. We are extremely proud to say that we have brought one amenity to life already. That is, the CNI grant requires an investment of $100,000 for an early action activity. One of the top ideas from our survey of the residents was a uh, community garden. 
So we partnered with the Obodo Collective and invested that $100,000 into their urban farm, where residents of Marble Manor have plots designated just for them free of charge. And there are charts right over there. You can see pictures of the current status of the Obodo farm. So transformation and implementation. After months and months of meetings and planning, the draft transformation plan was ready and was submitted to HUD on May 18th, 2023. After the draft plan was submitted, the team continued to meet with residents and to drill down and refine the plan. The final transformation plan was submitted to HUD on November 15th, 2023. On February 8th, 2024, the CNI implementation grant application was submitted. Implementation grant awards up to $50 million to each grantee to implement what was outlined in their transformational plan. The implementation grant is a highly competitive application process from housing authorities and developers all across the country. If we make it, which fingers crossed, we have high, high hopes that we will, if we make it through the first round of screening, then we will expect to have a site visit from HUD sometime June or July of this year. February 15, 2024, HUD notified us of their findings that they accepted our transformation plan, which thank you very much, we had already submitted our implementation plan. And to date, we're still waiting to hear notification from HUD on the status of our implementation grant. So at this point, our CNI, all of our efforts won't cease but the formal application process is completed and we just wait to hear from HUD on the status of our application. Any questions? Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Commissioner Bernie. Thank you for the presentation. So I know that Marble Manor is 35 acres, but how big is the total area that's it's subject a, to the grant? Give or take, you know, uh, under two square miles. <laughs> I think in acres. Okay. Um, oh, then, well, well, our, yeah. So okay. Thank Give you. Give or take. Okay. Give thank or take. You. Thanks for the math. <laughs> and then was there a requirement as part of the grant to stand up like a community council or advise you, advisory group? And if there was, or even if there wasn't, are we sort of meeting regularly um, to just sort of talk about how to continue the action, to think about other grants, or to sort of be prepared when we have a site visit. Um, and I guess who's in that sort of working group that's periodically meeting to check in and work on some of these uh, action items that are part of the grant. So what the Housing Authority chose to do is that we went to the site directly and we gather what we call our resident ambassadors. And so we made basically a commission or a counseling team made up directly of residents from Marble Manor, as well as Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority staff and City of Las Vegas staff to meet and convene and to discuss wants and needs of the residents, um, ideas on the transformation plan, to review it, to refine it, to give us additional ideas, to give their thoughts on design, to give their thoughts on what amenities should be included in the future project. Project. And then we still had uh, public meetings where, you know, general stakeholders and anybody from the general public was invited out. We took their ideas and we incorporated them also in our implementation plan. And then when we still have ongoing events, we still have a CNI table, which was mentioned earlier. When the Housing Authority gives other events, we still set up a CNI table so that we can have ongoing interest and so that we can continue to solicit ideas from the public. And in addition, the consultant who helped us submit the application. We're having ongoing meetings as we speak around getting ready for the next phase of it. Um, shortly, um, we'll actually have com uh, communications with you all as commissioners and other stakeholders as to a team that we'll put together to either go to DC or have uh, us host HUD, depending on how we look at it. But yes, there are ongoing efforts as we're uh, preliminary efforts assuming that we're gonna gonna get the award yeah um, Ms. Turner yes a comment just to add to that um Commissioner Bruni I did some preliminary homework about how this works and um 
I can gladly say I believe we are meeting every goal. Uh, it was a Microsoft team planning a master community in, in Georgia. Right. And I was very impressed. I sent the director something, yes. and this was as soon as he kind of got in. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. So just to let you know, I'm, I'm very impressed. And um, our consultants are right hand in hand where they're supposed to be. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more interaction, if I would like to say so, between um, even the commissioners with them so that they know that we are reachable and some of their you know, ideas are valid. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. In addition to the Marble Manor um, CNI project that Dina spoke to, Frank Stafford's going to come up and just about talk about other development that we're uh, preservation and development that we're doing throughout the Southern Nevada region. Good afternoon, Frank Stafford, Director of Development and Modernization. Uh, at the previous board meeting, Commissioner McCurdy had asked about uh, some of the other uh, projects we were doing and what jurisdictions they were in. So I prepared uh, a handout that was for identifying there's 10 major projects that we're working on. Uh, they're in the city of Las Vegas, Clark County, uh, city of North Las Vegas. Uh, there is one currently that we're doing in Henderson, but those projects uh, uh, will, will create roughly 1,600 units if we get the funding to complete all of those. Now, Marble Manor is also included in that, but even if we remove Marble Manor from that total, we're still looking at 1,000 units that will be newly constructed and are preserved. Uh, we have came a race at this particular time, $175,000, uh, but there is still a gap of roughly 373000 which mainly, not 1000 $373 million. <laughs> Sorry about that. $373 million, and we've raised $175 million. Marble Manor will be a large chunk of that if we get that implementation grant. Uh, what I've shown around uh, the room posted, uh, at the, uh, the, the uh, pictures at the end, we have two scatter site houses in the city of North Las Vegas, uh, one at 2825 Civic Center, one at 2904 Basswood. Those properties are non-aided, which means they get no money from the uh, federal government. Our affordable housing uh, department uh, ma manages those. But of course, with them not getting any type of aid, it's, it's hard to maintain those type of uh, properties. So the city of North Las Vegas awarded a, a 700,000 CDBG grant. And we started construction on those two homes. And as you can see uh, from the pictures, uh, there's a couple interior that you can see how, how they basically, I, I wish you could have saw them in the beginning, what they look like. But these will be ready to be leased out uh, within at least another three weeks or so. That's just part of the, uh, the work uh, that we've been doing. We also have the Jamestown Towers uh, development. Uh, we're getting ready to open up phase one. We're hoping, fingers crossed, around April 15th. Uh, there are some pictures you can see uh, from the outside with the painting contrast before and after. You can see some interior shots of the new layouts with the cabinets, bathroom, what have you. And we also have Hullam Homes, uh, which is in Clark County. Those two particular projects are 259 units that will be preserved. And when we say preserved, we expect to get at least a minimum another 25-year lifespan of, out of those properties. Uh, the other uh, properties we have are our home means Nevada. We are having our weekly, sometimes it seems like daily calls, trying to uh, get those projects to the finish line meeting with the uh, housing division. We'll be going before the Board of Finance uh, in April for two of the properties. I think it's Abandoned Plaza and uh, Janice Brooks Bay. And then we have three other projects with developers, which will be going by June. So that's going to be a big step to get through Board of Finance. And we're hoping to close on all of those projects roughly around September, October of this year and start construction with uh, construction completion no later than uh, first quarter of 25. And any questions? Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Commissioner Bruni? Thank you. Thank you for this. It's super helpful. And I'm sorry for if this is a stupid question, but for the senior units, um, 
Is there any, are any of them options where you could have a roommate and just add, you know, an, an additional bed so and we just get a little bit more than, you know, 200 beds even though we have 200 units or is there like a federal regulation that you can't have roommates? I know sometimes in assisted living facilities, you know, two people can share rooms. I don't know if, if in any of these properties that are senior, whether their rooms are big enough where we could actually have a roommate situation just to, again, expand the number of, of homes that we can provide. Well, some of the senior units are, are two bedrooms, uh, but the Housing Authority also has a, a policy for like living aids if, if that's required. So that would be something that the, uh, the resident would need to apply for and if they meet those conditions. I, uh, I wanted to kind of over, overstate something that I think Frank understated. Having 10 projects going on at one time is absolutely amazing. And I just wanted to recognize Frank and his team. That's, that's, uh, I've, I've done this for a while. And normally we either have a, a acquisition or new build strategy or preservation. But uh, Frank and his team are doing all of it at the same time. And, and uh, you know, shout out to the rest of the agency that's pulling in and supporting them. But at the end of the day, he, he's leading an effort that's looking to bring 1,600 units over the next eight years to the Valley, which we greatly need. And with that being said, um, you know, a couple years ago, we upped our efforts in making project-based vouchers available. And I wanted Frank to make an announcement about an award that we're handing out this week with Project Based Vouchers. So basically, uh, I'll kind of give a little background. As uh, Mr. Jordan said, a couple of years ago, we did 200 vouchers uh, that we issued to five developers uh, to uh, build new, new construction and permanent supportive housing. So of those 200 vouchers, we're pleased to say that uh, construction is scheduled to start on the majority of them between April and June. And I think the last one will start construction uh, January of 2025. So those vouchers will be, be put to use uh, from that RFP. Uh, we uh, put out a second RFP for two, 350 units. And under that RFP, the Housing Authority under our affordable housing submitted uh, several applications. And as I mentioned, like the two houses you see over there where they don't get any federal aid, we have roughly, um, I'd say about 600 units, I want to think, it's about 600. They get no federal aid, which means they operate by the rents that come in. And basically those units are in need of quite a bit of repair. So under the guidelines provided by, guidelines provided by HUD, we did submit uh, vouchers for those properties within this round, not for all of the units, but for a significant amount of it. So we follow the, uh, the guidelines, our administrative plan, uh, and we had an independent entity that had to review the process to make sure everything was done in accordance with HUD because the Housing Authority was submitting for properties that we currently manage. Uh, that review was completed, uh, and I'll just kind of read uh, just a little blurb from it. As the independent entity for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, this letter is advised that we have completed the review of the SNRSHA selection process in accordance with PBV 24 CFR 983-51E, Section E, and have found that the selection of project-based voucher awards to have been appropriately selected based on the selection procedures specified in SNRHA's administration plan. Uh, the properties that we will be providing an award on is Janice Brooks Bay, which will receive 52 vouchers. Janice Brooks Bay is one of our Home East Nevada uh, projects that we're planning to start construction this fall. It'll be a preservation. Brown Homes is a development that has 116 units near the Flamingo office, uh, off of Flamingo and I guess that's Nellis. And we're looking to award 50 units vouchers to that property. Robert Gordon, which is the uh, location where we're currently at, which would be uh, the four plexes that are to my north and the two-story building to my west will be a total of 174 units awarded. And then we have uh, 
some scatter site homes. Uh, there's six of them, including the two that I briefed the construction on that's about to be ready to lease in two weeks. And then we have some duplexes, uh, some fourplexes. So there's a total of total of 24 of the scattered site units, and that would be a total of 300 units to SNRHA affordable housing developments. In addition, we set aside uh, 50 vouchers for developers who were providing permanent supportive housing. And help of Southern Nevada, we will be awarding 25 vouchers to their Tropicana Trails uh, development. And Sunrise Ranch, uh, which is a permanent supportive housing by Nevada Hand, will be awarded 25 vouchers as well. And we have representatives from, Sun, I mean, from Help of Southern Nevada and Nevada Hand in attendance with us today. That's actually incredible. Thank you. Um, these vouchers are coveted by the developers. Uh, this is a big deal. Uh, and it definitely uh, helps ease the burden as we look at financing for the overall project. Any uh, comments from members of the board? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. All right. And Mr. Chair, just to conclude my report, I wanted to thank uh, Sandra Thompson. Uh, Ms. Thompson is the director of the Federal Housing and Finance Agency. She was recently appointed by President Biden to oversee that agency. In a nutshell, she oversees the, the lending practices of banks as well as Fannie and Freddie. Um, um, our team, Paula Tucker and her team, gathered a number of finance people from the community to, uh, to meet with Ms. Thompson. She was in town for another engagement. Uh, we have a long history, and I asked if she would come over and spend time with us. And uh, we had around 40 people, bankers, other finance folk come together and just share ideas on how we can uh, better, you know, make uh, home loans available to, to our families as well as, as well as get more participation from the banking community. And then finally, don't forget our... our uh, um, monthly newsletter you know again I'm 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 not even amazed anymore at the ability of us to fill this up every single month based on the great things that the teams are doing and that concludes my report mr. chairman thank you so much director Jordan a lot of good things happening we appreciate your work and we appreciate all the presenters for coming forward today uh, we'll now move on to item number three the consent agenda item number six uh, to approve it or write approval of request to write off outstanding tenant accounts receivable and vacated uh, you did uh, recently just hear a presentation uh, from mr. Ortega and mr. Midden uh, and I hope you have a little bit better understanding on what's happening and with that being said I'll entertain a motion Approve. we have a motion by Commissioner Brown and second by Commissioner Turner uh, is there any discussion on that motion here and seeing none move to a vote all in favor aye, aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Consent agenda item has been approved. We'll now move on to section four. Director Jordan. We, uh, since we last came together. I always forget to do that. If we can just have a moment of silence on the uh, on the screen, we'll, we have listed those who've died um, since we last came together. So we'll just go through the list and have a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to section five, uh, approval to increase Praxis Consulting Group, LLC, contract number C23027 in the amount of $233,700 uh, for consulting services needed for seven mixed finance community housing fund and homies Nevada initiative funded projects. Mr. Stafford. Good afternoon. Frank Stafford, Director of Development Modernization. Item 8 is approved to increase practice consulting group LOC contract number C23027 in the amount of $233,000 for consultant services needed for the seven mixed finance community housing fund and homies about an initiative fund. Uh, the procurement for practice uh, 
was conducted in uh, May of 2023. That first contract uh, expires 30th September 23, but it has four years of renewal. During this time period, we spent a total of $83,000 uh, to Praxis, and we are working with them on the uh, seven Home East Nevada and Clark County Community Housing Fund projects. They are development of Marion Bennett Plaza Phase Two, development of Old Rose Gardens, development of Duncan and Edwards, development of 28th and Sunrise, rehab of Janice Brooks Bay, the RAD conversion and rehab of Jamestown Towers, and the RAD conversion and rehab of Hullam Homes. The uh, SNRHA, let's see, oops. The, the total for these contracts with practice is going to be $233,070. It includes reimbursable costs for each project. The total cost of this task order will be paid out of SNRHA fiscal year 2020 capital funds as consultant service are an eligible expenditure. Praxis is a male owned firm. The owner is Eric Novak, holding 100% ownership. Uh, this contract is subject to Section 3, and Praxis has indicated that it will comply with our Section 3 policy to the greatest extent feasible. A representative from Praxis will be present to answer any questions. Action request is Executive Director requests the Board to approve the increase to Praxis Consulting Group LLC's contract C23027 by $233,070 for the consultant services needed for the various mixed finance, self developed RAD, and fair clock to RAD conversion projects as described above. Thank you, Ms. Stafford. Are there any questions from members of the Board? Hearing and seeing none, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner Bruni, a second by Commissioner Disman. Is there any discussion on the motion, either in person or online? Hearing seeing none, we'll entertain a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. Item number nine. Approval to authorize. Item number nine. Oh, there it is. Go ahead. Approval to authorize Linda Properties LLC to connect to the public sewer connection and make accompanying improvements to Gerald Schaefer Heights. Background. On February 26, 2024, the Southern Border Regional Housing Authority received a proposal from Tanny Engineering on behalf of Linden Properties LLC to connect to the public sanitary sewer connection and make some accompanying improvements to the SNRHA property, Gerald Schaefer Heights, a senior development property located in Clark County, Nevada. The developer is proposing to build 19 single family residential homes on the 4,500 square foot lots uh, on 2.58 acre parcels. This development is north of Linda Avenue and is directly west of Gerald Schaefer Heights. The developer wishes to tie into the sewer connection at Schaefer Heights and has proposed several improvements to the property and appreciation of the SNRHA granting this request, including constructing a decorative masonry wall, landscaping per Title 30 landscaping standards, maintenance and sealants of the existing sewer line, and some parking lot improvements. In addition, the developers agreed to cover construction related issues that may occur as a result of this connection for a period of 10 years. Action requested executive director request board approval to execute an agreement between SNRHA and Linda Property LLC to allow them to connect to sewer lines at Gerald Schaefer Heights per the terms outlined in their proposal dated February 26, 2024. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Bruni. Thank you. I just have a question. Is this uh, detached or attached housing, the units? Are they single detached or? They are, they are detached yeah. and okay. Mr. I think Ryan's. They're single family homes. Uh, 2,400 square feet, two story. Uh, uh, please one. state your name for the record. You look great. Sorry. Like you know Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it still fits. You know, the world says not as busy. Uh, uh, so there's one house in the corner um, that's single story for the, cause uh, it affects the neighbors. So that's 1,800 square feet and the rest are 2,400 square foot, okay. two story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, can you state your name? Uh, sorry, Ryan Hogue with Linda Properties. All right, any other questions from members of the board? Perfect, thank you. Um, there are no further questions. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner Bruni, a second, second by Commissioner Turner. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing and saying none, we'll entertain a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. Item number 10, approval of the Executive Director Performance Appraisal Tool. Um, did everyone have an opportunity? Oh, Director Jordan. No, no, wait. I was just. Okay. 
Did, any, did everyone have an opportunity to take a look at the performance tool? Yes. Any comments, questions from members of the board? No questions? No comments? We're good? Commissioner Burn, you good? All right. We'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Dismond with the motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Brown with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone abstains? Anyone opposed? Hearing none, none. Um, motion is adopted. Thank you. We got the vote, right? Okay. All right, this is a section for new business, section six. Any new business that members of the board would like to uh, bring forward at this time? I know last time we had some outstanding items. We wanna thank uh, Director Jordan staff for coming forward and speaking to some of the issues that were brought forward at the last meeting. Um, Commissioner Bruni, anything? Uh, I'd love an update on the landlord uh, program, please. All right. Um, anyone else? Cool. All right. Uh, we'll move on down to uh, the second time set aside for public comment. This time period is set uh, for items that may not be on the agenda. We ask that as you come forward, you state your name and your address for the record so that we can follow up with you. It looks like we have a Kimberly Quarles Mookie. Maury. Maury. Get me together. Come on forward. Say your I name for the record. Name. Hi, I'm Kimberly Quarles Mooring, Q U A R L E S M O O R I N G, 4995 South Maryland Parkway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89119, apartment 41. All right, say whatever you like. Okay, so I've been on the Housing Choice um, Voucher Participant Program for the last 14 years. I've never been in the situation being on this pro program. I um, appreciate the assistance. I received a seven-day notice. So let's say, for example, I started a job last year in October. I used the portal like they told me to upload all of my paycheck stubs. I didn't get a response. I'm also a part of the Family Self-Sufficiency Program. They're doing great things. Um, Ms. Geisha Sanders is my worker. So when I wasn't getting responses on the portal, I started sending them to Ms. Sanders, like, hey, I know you told me being a part of this program, I would be assigned a worker, because it's really essential for those on the FSS program to have a worker, somebody that can talk to just in case their income changes, so things can happen a little more like prioritized. So I didn't even receive any feedback from them. I had already walked away from the job from October till January 8th, and then they provided me with an income rental increase for $913. Mind you, I had already stopped working on January 8th, reported it to Ms. Sanders as well as the portal. Nothing was said. So I was like, well, let me give them some time. I understand that they're understaffed because that's what the supervisors always say. So when it came to February 21st and I came in and I'm like, hey, you guys, I'm only getting my SSI disability. It's $842. It's $913. You guys quoted me on this rent. I told you guys back in January that I'm no longer working there. I'm just a little um, anxious. I have my anxieties really high. Like, what can be done? Ms. Gisa, Ms. Sanders also told me, Kim, you'll find your niche. Just keep looking for a job. You'll find your niche. Don't give up. Don't, don't be discouraged. You'll find a job that you like. I'm currently at 7-Eleven. I enjoy what I do. So when I turned the paperwork in to Ms. Tamia Jones, who finally, after a year, me being on the FSS program, me being told she's the actual housing choice voucher worker for the FSS program, she finally gets my case four days after the 21st. And then she tells me, this won't be able to be processed, Ms. Mooring, because you have to wait 30 days. I said, well, the first is coming around the corner. I reported this back in January. And she was like, basically, there's nothing we can do for you. You have to go talk to your management. Just basically figure it out. And I'm like, OK, that's not going to stop me. I walked across the street, came over here, and talked to Ms. Sanders like, hey, they even took the initiative to go to the portal and tell me that they found 
where I uploaded, I'm no longer working in my last paycheck step, but it was null and invalid because it was associated and attached to something, to a report of change that was already closed. So like I told her, have you guys ever familiar yourself, familiarized yourself with your portal? Because the only thing that you can report on this portal is a change of income. They don't have forms on there like, you know, the report of change or reasonable accommodation where we can download it and actually edit it so through take Google. A, so take, that one second, just take a few minutes to wrap up your thoughts or a few <clears throat> seconds to wrap up your thoughts and then what we're going to do is we're going to ask for you to stand behind because we can't go back and forth during this period. So someone can help. Okay, so I was just trying to bring it to you guys' attention that maybe you guys need to get back to the drawing board when it comes to your portal. Upload those forms in those particular documents so that we can download them and edit them through the portal and then send them. Because a lot of people, like you guys were stating with all of these programs that you guys have dealing with senior citizens and those people who are not really familiar with technology. So I just would like to speak to somebody. We we'll ask that you hang tight. Because I'm still in debt. Just hang tight. Yeah. Somebody will I paid $637, though, out of the 761 I was quoted. We got you. Okay. Hang tight. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward at this time? Please uh, state your name, uh, where you stand at for the record. Phyllis Carpenter, 50, um, no, it's 801 Gerson Street. Okay, so last month, the February 8th meeting at Sartini, they put a notice up that said it had been canceled. Um, I don't know why that was. Um, the vents in my apartment, in the current apartment, they came and they said that they cleaned the, the ducts. They stuck one hose up the return and one up the vent. That isn't cleaning the ducts. Um, <sighs> we had an event, um, I believe it was last month or the month before, at Marble Manor. Um, I went into the community center. I was talking to Miss Tucker over off to the side, Ava approached the CERTS police officer and said something to him, and he immediately came and sat at the table, like in between Ms. Turner and I don't remember who the other person was, but he continued to follow me around the rest of the day, and that was out of line. The water heaters at our property, I had the water heater replaced because I used a year's worth of my um, utility assistance for the, for the gas bill. They used it all up in two months. Um, and so I stopped running the heater last month. This month, my bill was $22. Um, so that shows that the ducks are not, that they're disconnected. Like I said, the maintenance man came in and pointed a, a, a temperature thing at the ducks. And he said, oh, well, it's coming out different temperature here because you're further away from the return. Whatever, it, it, the ducks are disconnected in the ceiling is what it is. Um, also, so when they came and they replaced the water heater, I noticed that um, they didn't have the, the strap because they, city code is they need to have a strap for the wall in case of a, an earthquake. Also, they need to be on a pedestal and also have a drain pan. And so I contacted, and I know that from working section three. Um, and so I contacted the code enforcement and asked them, what's the code? And they said, no, that is the code. So why is it that the public housing doesn't have to abide by the code? You know what I mean? I don't get that. So I contacted, they, they, they suggested I contact the city council members. Um, I contacted my ward representative and, the, and his assistant told me that the, there's a loophole in, in the system where they don't have to, to abide by it. Also, our manager's meeting at the property, um, it should be the same day and time every month, just like every other property. But every time I've gone, I said, you know, one day's notice, you handing out a notice the day before, a lot of people who have things to do, you know, you can't just sh the day before hand out a notice and expect people to show up because that's not enough notice. And she's like, well, my schedule's so busy that I can't, you know, get, I can't put a specific date and time. Well, what do you think our schedules are like? Yours is more important than ours now. And um, also, two, three of my neighbors have told me they have mold in their apartment. They've called the management and they just come and spray it with kills. Okay, thank you. Hello, how are you doing? Welcome. Good. Thank you very much. Fulal O'Reilly, Help of Southern Nevada. Um, I just wanted to thank the commission as well as um, Director Jordan and the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority for awarding us the 
projects-based vouchers for our Tropicana Trails uh, project. This project is permanent supportive housing and it's going to focus on the zero to 30% of area median income. And as you know, um, in Nevada, we only have 17 of those units um, for every 100 households that are in that zero to 30% that need that. And so it's a start. Thank you for making it possible with the project-based vouchers. Um, additionally, uh, for the staff, um, Help Southern Nevada should probably be added to your uh, uh, rental and utility assistance resource um, as we are administering some of the Clark County RSU funds. Um, I think it's called rental security something. I forget what the U is. Changes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, also Help Southern Nevada is the one of the uh, two organizations that administer the Southwest Gas um, uh, Utility Assistance. Uh, so with that, thank you again. Um, hope to see you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward during this portion of public comment? Can you go more than once?